Welcome to our lecture online and here's our next video on crystalline structures and this time we're going to take a look at metals, metallic crystalline structures. And it seems kind of strange but yes when metals solidify they arrange themselves in a particular crystalline structure and there's different types. The most common three types are the body center cubic which means there's a an atom on each of the four on each of the eight corners of the cube and there's one at the very center. As you can see that when you have an arrangement like this the ratio of the volume occupied by the atoms versus the space that's left over is a 68 percent of the volume is occupied by the atoms. There are other crystalline structures that metal can get into so such as face center cubic which means that you have eight, elect eight atoms at each of the eight corners plus you have another atom at each of the six sides sticking half of it into the cube the other half out of the cube to be shared by the next cube right next to it and then we have what we call hexagonal closed pack structures where you have an atom at each of the six corners here and each of the six corners below. Only one sixth of each atom then belongs to this particular uh, structure. We also have a one at the top phase, one at the bottom phase where half of it is in and half of it is out and then there's three complete atoms completely enclosed by this hexagonal structure. So in total there will be uh, three plus four, five, six total uh, atoms in one of those structures. Also these two are about the same amount filled, about 74 percent of the total volume is filled by the actual atoms with only about 26 percent of free space. So why do atoms like that, metallic atoms, crystallize in those particular structures? Well it has to do with a lot of different things. One of them it has to do with the ionic size, it has to do with how easily the electrons are able to uh, become free and roam between the atoms. Uh, it also has to do with uh, where the uh, electrons are situated in their orbitals. Of course a lot of the ones, especially in the transition here, uh, transition metals, we have the uh, the s orbitals and we have the d orbitals and you can see that as more and more electrons are situated in the valence bands they're less likely to be free or more likely to be free depending upon how many they are. In the end the way it typically happens is that the atoms themselves become positively charged objects because one or more electrons has been moved away from the atom so, so temporarily they become positive charged objects and the electrons then end up roaming relatively freely between those atoms and the atoms will align themselves in a crystalline structure depending upon which one we're talking about and then the electrons will kind of roam around free between them and which makes uh, metals very good conductors of heat and very con good conductors of electricity. In addition to that there's a lot of different properties belonging to the various type of structures that we have. For example, if we have the body centered cubic and that should be an I, not should be an I right there, not a, a U, cubic structure. Um, in the body centered cubic structure the metals tend to be harder uh, such as iron and vanadium and chromium, nobidium, molybdenum, those tend to be harder metals because of that particular structure. Also because the way they're arranged they tend to be a little bit less dense than typical uh, because of uh, because they take up less space uh, I mean they take up more space, there's uh, more space available so they take up less of the total available space with the atoms. What's also very interesting is that the ones over here you can see I try to color code in this uh, periodic table the type of structure, crystal structures you have for the different kind of metals. What's really interesting is the one, the six right here they have an extremely high melting point. They're very very hard and they're very hard to melt. And so the, the idea then would be why would they have such a hard melting point? Well it turns out there's a very strong cohesion between the, the um, positive ions and then the negative electrons holding that together. Um, iron itself has a fairly high melting point. It's not necessarily across the board, there's different properties that sometimes don't quite hold together. So you say to yourself, well why does that one have a high melting point when it's not part of the set? So there are other exceptions to it. Uh, what's also interesting is that the, the uh, red ones right here which have the body center cubic structure, they're harder to mal to, to, to uh, form and shape into different, uh, different shapes. Metal uh, can be, uh, when you work it, you can, you can kind of make metal 
push itself into any kind of structure and then hold that structure, which is kind of interesting in metal. But the ones that have this kind of um, crystalline structure, the body center cubic structure, they're not very good at it. For example, it's very difficult to take a piece of iron and mold it into a particular shape. The ones that are face center cubic and hexagonal close packed uh, structures, they are much easier to work into different shapes. For example, copper, silver, and gold are known for their malleability, as we call it. It's very easy to turn them into very, uh, very nice different shapes. Gold, for example, is known uh, that it holds its structure even though you can mallet it into very, very thin layers and very, very thin strings. So the properties of copper, silver, and gold are very unique in that respect. It turns out because of the way they're packed, it makes it easier for the atoms to be moved and still remain into that crystalline structure. When you have a body center cubic structure like that, it's much more difficult to make one atom move across from another. So they tend to be much more rigid, which makes the metal a lot harder. So, it's, so, so this is kind of a very basic overview of the different types. It's kind of interesting to see how we have different kinds of structures uh, based upon the size of the ions based upon how many electrons can be freed, based upon how the electrons are distributed throughout the valence band. For example, you can start off with having the first two electrons filled in the s orbital like this, and then of course as you move to the left, you'll have one in the d orbital, you have two in the d orbital, so you have three in the d orbital. By the time you get four in the d orbital, one of these will move over here and come over there, and it's less likely to pull those electrons free because of that, because they feel fairly stable within those electron structures harder to move with electrons, and so you expect to see different kind of bonding because of that. And that's why I have the transition from these four into a different kind of crystalline structure because of the way the electrons are set up. Anyway, quick little overview for metallic crystalline structure.